As much as it is nice that I have a husband that is a total tech nerd and loves gear and cameras and lights and sound and all of that, it's, it's so lovely, I will say. However, it does give me a bit of paralysis of sorts. I get really overwhelmed with everything that I should or shouldn't do when it comes to recording. So I end up not a lot of the time. But here I am recording, much to his dismay. We have thousands of dollar cameras and I'm using my phone. He got me this ember mug for Christmas and I'm obsessed. Also, do you like my lava lamp back there? I've always wanted a lava lamp and I finally got one. It's like $25. For some reason I thought they were like $600. Here I am living the dream. Okay, speaking of living the dream, what a segue. I have realized the past, you know, several years that I've had a wound, a childhood wound, um, and a block. I will really, I'll call it a block. And what I mean by block is like, it's a block that I have, a mental block that I have when it comes to manifesting my actual goals and my true dreams. And I didn't realize that that block affected that. I realized I had this, you know, uh, association, self-identity, negative self-identity that affected the way that I approached a deity, the deity that I once, you know, really believed in and I was raised believing in, and my relationship to that deity. It affected how I saw myself in my family and like my family system. I knew those things, but I didn't realize that it also blocked my career identity. And it blocked what I, I, I couldn't get to the bottom of what I really wanted. And that's been something I've had my whole life where I'll be passionate about something. Oh my God, hold on, I have to be honest. I'm literally boiling. Oh, we're being real here. Anyway, so, I've had aspirations and I am a really diligent, hard worker. All this stuff is true. I didn't know what I was fully capable of or what I fully dreamed of doing or becoming until I realized that that block and that wound affected my vision. And I re recently discovered that because I was listening to this podcast and they were discussing how between the ages of zero and seven is whenever you typically create the blocks that stop you from being able to fully dream and manifest your dream life or, you know, dream love life or whatever it is. That's how I kind of realized what was blocking me, what was stopping me. So I was discovering what was my limiting belief. So there are two questions that really got me to discover what my specific limiting belief is. Okay. One, what is your greatest fear if your dream does not come true? Okay, that's number one. Number two, what is your greatest fear if it does come true? And that one was interesting. I'm the type of person that you switch things around and it's just like it clicks for me because I used to struggle with perfectionism. The phrase, <laughs> Everybody is imperfect, or no, nobody's perfect. People would say nobody's perfect, and I just wanted to be the outlier, right? But then I turned it around and I said, everybody's imperfect, and so I was like, oh, I'm included in that. I'm everybody, I'm part of that. Anyway, I really like switching things around. So that question of what is your greatest fear if it does happen, if your dream does come true, if you do get everything that you want, what's your greatest fear then? And I thought that was interesting because what is my greatest fear? Or what, not just that though, when I asked myself that, I caught the first thought and one of my first thoughts was mistrust. Like I didn't believe it. I was like, well, you think you got it. You think you got that far, but you didn't. And that's just one of the things. That's not like my core wound block, but it was one of them. That's, I think I have done a really good job at faking it till I make it to where I don't, know if I fully believe myself. Like when I have success, there's this thing in my head that just somehow doesn't believe it. So that was the first thing. So I worked on that for a little bit. But then I worked on the the answer to what is my greatest fear if it does. If it does happen. And I think that was really, really important. Once you've identified the, the patterns, then you can start discovering the beliefs that you hold about those things. 
I mean, I suggest talking to a friend, somebody you can trust to give you maybe an opposite opinion, maybe an opposing thought. Also, journaling. Journaling can be really good for that. Lastly, therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy or acceptance and commitment therapy. All are options. But once you discover what it is that you're afraid of, not just if your dream does not come true, but what is your greatest fear if your dreams do come true, that gives you all the insight that you need to unblock yourself. And think about the dreams that you have had and figure out where you have settled, where you have, you have placed on a pedestal this ideal goal or dream that really is attainable for you right now. That feels like it's difficult, but you know you can get there. What is the one step above that? What is holding you back from the one step above that? That thing, that is the thing you need to work on. That is the thing we need to talk about. So let's talk about it. What's yours?